This episode is brought to you by Hulu Plus. With Hulu Plus, you can stream all of your favorite television shows wherever and whenever you want. You can watch the current season and episodes of Bob's Burger, Family Guy, The Following. You can also watch every episode of shows like Law & Order, SVU, South Park, Archer, and Key and & Peele. I was just checking out season four, episode two of Key and Peel, where they did a bit on steampunks, and I highly recommend you check it out. Right now, sign up to HuluPlus.com slash I-C-E-T and get two weeks full access completely free. That's right, free. That's HuluPlus.com slash I-C-E-T. So get with it and start streaming TV now with Hulu Plus. This episode is also brought to you by Audible. They're the world's leading provider of audiobooks with over 150,000 titles to choose from. And you get one free just by going to audible.com slash iced tea. That's right. You get a free audiobook and a free 30 day trial at A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash I-C-E-T just for listening to this show. Real readers get their audiobooks from Audible. Upon initial contact with Ice-T's music, I had envisioned him to be an ill-mannered and psychologically unstable man with an extremely uneducated and barbaric frame of mind. His raps displayed nothing but ridiculous jargon, shocking sexual audacity, and repulsive images of the ghetto. However, after further analysis of his music, I can deduce that he is the epitome of anti-disestablishment terrorism, who embodies the entire spectrum of the urban experience and struggle. But to make things more plain and simple to the layman, I find Ice-T to be the dopest, flyest, OG pimp, hustler, gangster player, hardcore motherfucker living today. To be honest, I am totally and completely on his dick. Welcome to the Ice-T Final Level Podcast, featuring your co-host, Mick Benzo, and your host, Ice-T. Hey, yo, what's up? This is Ice T and Mick Benzo on Final Level Podcast number twenty seven. Number twenty seven podcast done in the can. In and the can. In the can. And, it. can. and we've been dealing with lots of people that we really care about. You know, we had I had Tretch on here. Yeah, Mob Deep on here. I had Mob Deep on we here. Had Chris we, Rock on here. Chris Rock. We had Cool Keith. We had Plexico too. Plexico we Dallas. had. OG Busy B on here. Oh, the chief rock of Busy And Busy. during his interview, I think it was the last interview. Yeah, that was number 26. He number mentioned 26. somebody. Yeah, I told him. I told him we go find that somebody. Next, we you know, she's on my line. She calls me. And now we have. She was upset, have, too. She was upset. Said the guy pulled a trick on her. We're trying no, to she this wasn't out. really upset. She just out. said, you can't say my name because that's what she gets down. If you speak this woman's name, she will pop up on you. Yeah. And this is uh, uh, somebody from my era of hip hop when I really, 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 like, I don't even know. When I was got a chance to meet her, I was like, okay, I don't know. You know, I don't want to <laughs> be, got to be careful because I don't want to be in no diss record. The yeah. Immortal. Yeah. Roxanne. Shantae is in the building with us. Thank you, thank you, baby. Roxanne, <laughs> Shantae, with, with what's intro, up, mama? With, with that intro, y'all made it seem like I was the devil. Like, say her name and she will appear. Don't <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> we fish you out. We fish you out. I always, I always was careful, Roxanne. I said I'm never gonna date a rapper girl because I don't want to end up in a rap. You know what I'm saying? And 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 in them days, you was a you were known as a battle. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. When we had Busy Absolutely. B up here, she, Busy B said something. I, I'm not really sure though. Did y'all battle? We, you know, I, I tuned into the podcast because you know, just like you say, you know, you mentioned the name of the devil and they do appear. And so many people had hit me up and they said, you know, Busy B was actually um, on a podcast and he told the fact that he had um, fooled me. Like it was, um, he had told me we had a battle mm -hmm. and I went for world supremacy. Okay. Now, what a lot of people don't understand is that there is a title out there for that. And um, that's back when hip-hop was mainly based on talent. Mm -hmm. You know, that's before people started to listen with their eyes. Right. Which is what they do now. Okay. You know, if it looks good, it sounds good. Ooh, Got you. Ooh. You know, so before people listen with their eyes, when they really listen with their ears, it was a fact of true talent. Right. So I went for world supremacy because I knew I was hot in the streets. Mm -hmm. I knew I was hot in the clubs. I knew I knew what I was doing. And you wasn't scared? Not at all. 
Never seen. A young lady from Queens. Straight from Queens. Woo! 14 years old. Busted on the scene and said, okay, that's it. 14. Speak on it. Oh, I love it. years old. It's, I knew she's going to go in. Well, you know, I had my first battle, believe it or not. My first battle was done when I was 10 years old. And you can look it up online because a man actually went and he, um, he dug up the first man I ever battled. I was 10 years old. It was for $50. My mother spent 50 cents on the bus. We went to Woodside Projects. She took me to the project. She said, now listen, I'm going to spend this dollar because it was going to cost us 50 cent there and 50 cents back. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. You didn't have to pay. You was free. You was right. I was free. free. You know, okay. well, you know, that's how we did it. Yeah. You know, she just go on the bus, you go ahead, and then your mother just packed. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why we didn't pay the two fares. And um, she actually took her time out and said, okay, look, I'm going to take you. And she took me to Woodside Project. And I remember the DJ actually having to take his albums out of the milk crate and for them to turn the milk crate over for me to stand on it because wow. my opponent oh, you was, was too short you was exactly. short exactly so in order for me to do my delivery and I remember looking at my mom and saying you know can I say bad words <laughs> oh you want to say and curse she, words and she was like say whatever the fuck you got to to get that $50 ooh go that's mommy because that's go what mommy. we came for Right. That's mm-hmm. when we came for that money. We came for that fifty dollars and I actually won the fifty dollars and that At was the big ten years ten old. Ten years old. And then fourteen you battled Busy B. Yes. They had they said I had what was called like the Nipsey Russell syndrome, where you can look at items. It was just a, a fact of being able to come off the top of your head. And for it to make sense. That's called freestyle. Exactly. That's called so, freestyle. Exactly. I don't so, think rappers today know what that is. That's freestyle. When you can yeah. pick something out. Um, anything yeah anything you know like sitting here at the table and I'm looking at the water thinking about the times when I should be with my daughter my phone started ringing people start you know like that right. See, that, I that's, love it right. that's <laughs> Roxanne when did you get signed in the culture man? wait a minute wait a minute wait, hold on wait, wait, okay. pause now see Mickey, <laughs> Mickey, Mickey likes to give these stories and then he gets so excited he jumps ahead okay, so leave that B- Busy B yes told a story and he said that you guys was in a contest and then he told you that it was okay to curse. Yes. He actually said that to me. And he knew that you couldn't curse. And you so he set her up Ooh. to be disqualified. Ooh. Yes, he did. But did you spank his ass anyway? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> hit it. One, two, one, two, three. Hit it. Hey, two weeks ago at the place to be, and they were standing in line to see who a busy B, busy B. I left the curve in my 98, and then I rushed inside so I won't be late. Hey, the party is packed where you couldn't even move. Now everybody's rocking to the busy B's groove. Four, one, two, three. Once upon a time in a place called the Ville When I was walking through the projects, you know, trying to chill All of a sudden, mm. this guy came up to me He said, you fly, fly the high Talk to guys, don't know why And Three. there ain't a guy who can't pass you by I looked at him and I said, no lie Four One, two, three I was raised in the sun, I'm strong as an ox I'm kind of slim, trim, but I'm fine as a fox And right two. about this time, I just want y'all to know I choose the life that they call a disco So three. get up on your feet and let your fingers pop Because the busy bee is here and I'm ready to rock And before Four. I go, and before I quit I'm gonna One, give some more two, of this busy three. bee Hit yeah. it! One, two, three, hit it! I'm a devastating and that's a fact Never known to rock Always known to do that Yes, known to rap And be the top of my class Just to bust all the other MCs on their ass My Three. rhymes are deaf Could never be weak Every word I say is definitely unique Don't you know that I can rap and do it very well And One, I tell two, Busy be to go Three. to hell And I am a man with a master plan I make him turn tricks with a wave of my hand I two. am the man that the rock on the phone And I'm grooving and grooving on the microphone Crash your dance to the rhythm Cause the rhythm is sweet And every Everybody loves who busy be four one two three hit it before we came out here we told ourselves a pack he said don't get up there talk like that but see two. now he dissed me he made me shame and talking about busy b is his name three. what is a b it can't cope with me i stomp that shit in a one two three four one two three well, if you wanna just battle, y'all can listen to me Or you can take a couple lessons from who? A busy bee, a busy bee's Two. another brother that rocks the best Act the north, the south, the east and west They say he Three. walks around, all Adida down With medallions around his neck He got Four. diamond rings and all type things They keep the One, girls in GDJ One, two, three, hit it Your rhyme was cute, I 
think that it was funny, but we all know who makes the most money. We all know who is getting paid, who some guess who ain't got the man. We all know, yes, I think it's true, but busy be how many times you gonna wear the suit? Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> my busy B is my name, y'all, and that's the fact. And you can't beat that with a stick bar back. I'm gonna give you a little soap and a towel in the cup. Cause the bum MCs are all washed up. And I know I rock. It. Okay, that was cute. I think that's what nice. happened. What happened? Two. You's a nappy head nigga, you ain't getting bigger. If I had a gun, you know that I would pull the trigger. You just can't hang, and that is right. And you say you wanna battle me on the mic. Busy be what? I think you's a slut. I wanna uh, tell you something if you was in a right now. Busy one, be, huh? Tell two, you the approach. Let one, me tell you something, two, you look three, like a roach. Please, please get out my face with the master voice. That ain't what the people hear with the choice. Good is the music, the music is sweet. They wanna hear who's gonna rock like me. You a MC that came from way back. Never had an MC that had it like that. You always on down, you wanna be like me. One, One and two, only man is a bit. Let me tell you, you know you're through. What you say? I'm younger than you. I can't be an MC that's way from the back. You need right. to do it over cause you know you're whack. That's right. Telling you something, get it together. The hat you wearing the shit ain't even leather. You wanna yeah. play games and you wanna get loose? Well, we One, all know two, who got three. the juice. Okay, okay that's, that's it. In the back that's it. Five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. All right, come on out, come on out, come on out, come on out. Come on out. Let's hear it for both of them. Chief Rocker Busy B, Queen of Rocks, Roxanne Shante. But I was really hurt for a very long time behind that because I felt that I really truly deserved to hold world supremacy because I didn't come into hip hop to be a great female rapper. I came into hip hop to be a great rapper, mm -hmm. not a great female rapper. Ooh. So most of the times my opponents were only male. There weren't any females. I never battled a Shah Rock. I never battled a Pebbly Tool. I never battled anyone else because I felt that I was too good for a girl and I didn't want to do that to them. Mm. So I just went straight in for whoever they said was the best. So whoever was the best, that's who I went looking for. And there were a lot of times when I would show up to like clubs like the SNS Club when they would hold these different battles and they would say, there's a little girl at the door and she wants to get in on a battle. And they'd say, tell her to smile first. And at the time, very few African-American children from the hood had braces. Right. But I happened to have braces. They said, tell her to smile. And when I smiled, they said, she got braces, she can't come in. Oh, they were banning you. Yeah, they were banning the girl with the braces. You know what? There's so much. There's so much to talk about with Roxanne. The girl but now, with the now you and Busy are cool. That's all. Absolutely. That, you know no, what that's it is? Cool. You know, um, you learned a lesson. Yes, I did. Never listen to the opponent. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But you have to understand too. You co I'm coming from an era where you know Busy B. I'm looking. I'm looking up to Busy B because these are who I actually model myself behind. Busy B, the Cool Mo D's, the Grandmaster Cast. I mean, the real true MCs. I know I can be like them. That's who I am. Wow. So for him to tell me on the side of stage, listen, go out there and do your shit the way you do your shit. Right. Don't worry about the rules. Ain't no rules for you. You Roxanne Shante. <laughs> ain't no rules for you. You go out there and you get them. You know what I'm saying? Now listen, we done got everybody out the way. We done got them all out the way. You know why? Because they were scrubs. They were scrubs and they all gone. Who's left? Just the two best in the world. Just me and you. That's right. It's just me and it's just you. That's right. So it's just us two left, baby. That's it. He now you like going Muhammad out Ali. there. And he he, he sounds like Muhammad he the, Ali. He was the perfect hype man. He was the perfect hype man. He's telling me all of this through the curtain. Now listen, it's Chief Rocker Busy Bean. I'm trying to tell you right now, ain't nobody better than us. Nobody in the world is better than us. Now go on out there and say your shit the way. I said, but they said I can't curse. You can say what you want to say. Ain't no rules for you. Ooh. So as soon as wow. I got out there, the first wow. thing I said was, did my rhymes? They was like, yeah, that's great. Da, da, da. Then I was real hype. He was like, now see, you didn't curse that last time, but you got to win him over. <laughs> now you really want to win him over. Just go on and loose and do your shit. And I went out there cursed and got disqualified. And, wow. and I think that was the first and only time I ever cried at a battle. Like I literally cried wow. because I just knew I was going to walk away with this world supremacy. But then, um, Curtis Blow, who I'm friends with now, mm -hmm. who I love and respect, and it took me years to get over that. And I said to him, I said, you know, 
Why did you do that? Because I still could have won. I only lost by one point. Right. Curtis said, what does she need to lose? The and coach. Yeah, he said, what does she need to lose? And they said, man, she can't lose unless you give her like a two. He said, all right. And he wrote two on his thing and gave me a two. Oh, How about shit. that? Hey, well, you know what? We got a lot to talk about with you because your career is illustrious. It's oh, been yeah. it's been long and it's, it's gone in a lot of different routes. And here on the podcast, we definitely, this was just an opening segment yeah. right there. Yeah. That was just right. an opening segment. But there's just one last part that, that okay, I think everyone needs to hear about it is okay. the fact that when I did finally approach Curtis about it, I said to him, I said, why did you make that, make it that I lost? And he said, you know what? In 1985, the world was not ready for the best in hip hop to be a little girl. Ooh. They would not have taken the genre serious. Wow. And you have to understand that, Shante. He said it really had nothing to do with you. It's just that hip hop was now getting a certain platform and it was a certain way that things are looked at and viewed that the best in the world just could not have been you at that time. Wow. How about that? You know, and it's funny, we got a, a, a six degrees of separation, though. My first rap contest that I ever was in was in L.A. at a place called the Carolina West. I was just a guy in the audience, and they had rappers getting up there. I didn't even have a rap judge? name. Curtis Blow. See and that? I won that contest. Wow. And that night, against guys that thought they was rappers, I just had rhymes that I had made up. And, you know, I'm a player. I got some rhymes. <laughs> so you so got rhymes I got to say. some rhymes, you know. <laughs> I got them said my little bullshit rhymes and won the damn contest. And I was like, man, Curtis Blow is a real live rapper. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> If he if if he thinks I'm good, then I'm, then I'm good. <laughs> I might need to try this and get more serious about it. And uh, you know, that's when I got home. I said I need a name. You know, I need a name. And my boys at that time have been calling me Iceberg for Iceberg Slim, but Iceberg don't rhyme with nothing. So I came. My first <laughs> name is Tracy. So we got shortened and made it Ice T. And there it was, but that was after the Curtis Blow thing. When I was rhyming the Curtis Blow, I didn't even. Well, Curtis did you justice yeah. and made Roxanne feel bad. But no, but you That's know what? what? That it made her but, stronger too. But, that it, it, but it, she it understood what he did. said about you know where hip hop was going at that time. And yes, Busy B taught her a lesson. But, is but Busy don't trust was the, the opponent one who really did it. The opponent <laughs> never listened to the opponent. <laughs> What's that? Bullshit? Never listened to the opponent. He gonna tell you throw a light, throw a right, because I'm gonna go to the left. He's going to the left. He's going to hit you with his right. You know, that's what he did. You know, he's the one-two man, you know. But let's get into the podcast. Hey, you let's ready? You ready? Babe. Okay, final of a podcast number 27 with the world's famous Roxanne Shante on the show. And this is News. Oh, man, News. Mm -hmm. Gee whiz, man. You know, what, you know what's happening in the news today is just too chaotic, man. You know, I think what's going on in our society today is a very, very fucked up thing. People are turning people against each other. You got all communities standing up with each other. The most recent thing, now we know we're doing these podcasts is in advance, so we tend to talk on news. It's not totally current because this podcast probably will be out three weeks or four three or four more weeks after we actually make it. Right. But uh, what's going on right now really is the big threat that we got from North Korea. Yes. You know, dealing with the movie. And, you know, it, and we'll talk about movies in the movie segment. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just the fact that another country can call us and basically say, if you do this, we're going to do terrorist threats. And Sony Pictures and people to well, back off... Well, it's I, it's one I, of those things. I, I can't really, really, really be that upset because the simple fact, if someone makes a movie right now about our president of the United States of America to say they're going to kill him, we wouldn't like that. Right. We it's, wouldn't like that. Well, you cannot threaten the president of the United States. There's a term, uh, basically, yeah, you can yeah, you, you go to jail for that. Uh, you know, uh, if you if you, if you, make, example, if you get on this example, podcast, sir, no, I'm just saying, but I'm saying it's illegal. Okay, so it's not illegal to make one against North Korea, President? No, I guess it is. You know, and and it's thing, unfair. Yeah, absolutely. Let let's be let's be politically correct with it. We wouldn't like that. Okay. So mm -hmm. why do we think someone else should not? 
catch an attitude about what you're talking about, their president. Man. But what was actually told and what was revealed, because I sat back and I was actually watching the news. You know, sometimes I do watch the regular news of the masses, but then I watch the news that rules those in the masses. Speak and on. so watching that type of news, you know, you have your CNNs, your other names and all so forth, so forth and so on. But they said that the threat actually did not come from Korea, that it was actually a woman. Inside of Sony? Who worked, who used to work in Sony, who leaked it. And not only did she leak it, but she also started the whole thing about it being a possible threat, which to me was shocking, where just plain hearsay would be able to just change the whole world, just a matter of just one person saying one thing. Now, I understand that a lot of us now are very technical, so a lot of things have to do with the internet, and everybody has their smartphones, but you know for a fact how one rumor can just spread out and cause Quick. mass mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't put it past Sony, not saying I have anything against Sony. I mean, I never got royalties from them, but that's another story. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just saying, I wouldn't put We'll it, work on that. Yeah, we'll work on exactly. That. But I wouldn't, put, um, I wouldn't put anything past Sony to know that maybe they had a movie that was not of standards, where a lot of money was spent, and they needed to stir up. Mm. Some type that's of that's what Mickey interest. said. Mickey well, said chase people to the we theater. We said that in our last podcast with Busy. Yeah, we think that doing I mean, that actually chase people into the yes, theater to think it's so patriotic. We got to stand up. We got to go see this. But I still go back to I don't think we should make movies about somebody else's president, we're even making, in comedy. Well, when anytime you make a movie about killing someone who's real. You dig? Like, when you watch zombie movies, it's okay. We can kill all the zombies. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? You can make a move. You can do shows about that. Even in video games, you're killing mm -hmm. aliens. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but when you start putting a face on it and you say, we're going to kill this person, and this person happens to be alive. A real name, I don't sure. want to make a scene you know, about, oh, they make a movie about murdering you, Ice. See? You wouldn't... You would, you would not... I wouldn't think it was funny. You wouldn't funny. like that. And it wouldn't be funny. So I understand. Even if they didn't do it, that's foul that Sony would even do a movie that way. Yes. That's not common. And that might not be... That's not common. And they may not be our allies. That might be so-called the enemy. But then at the end of the day, the enemy has the right to say, motherfucker, exactly. we'll get it in with See? you over this right. shit. You dig? So I think what happened, what you're saying is, why are you surprised? If it really happened from North Korea. And then what Shantae is saying, how can some one person just trigger this chain reaction? Mm -hmm. Then could it be a conspiracy where Sony did it just to get us to go see a yeah. whack movie? Because we're talking more about this movie would never have been spoken about. Right. And from what I heard, much. it was whack. Did you see? Everybody is saying it's garbage, not garbage, mm. but garbage. And I like Seth and them. I think they're good actors, yeah. but it gets. It's, oh, it's just, and on the other hand, they're funny. They're very talented. But to do that, well, that was movies. Mm. This final level podcast number uh twenty seven with the infamous Roxanne <laughs> Shante. Now, inf you get infamy when you're known for this handling things. Your, your way. Yes, yeah. Yes. Handling her business. And this is TV. What, what's what you watch anything on TV, Shante? Any you got any favorite shows? Reality shows? What, what shows? I watch I watch I don't watch reality shows. The reason why I don't watch reality shows, unfortunately, the reason why I don't watch reality shows I bet I know why. Is because my reality is reality show type right. TV. <laughs> so I don't have time to watch someone else's fake reality when my reality is so real. So I just don't I just can't grab onto it for some reason. I just it just doesn't seem real to me. Okay, so I got I, I got a good reality. question for you. Cause I've been I've been very outspoken about this type of stuff. And now we got a sister, a real live sister on Absolutely. the podcast. How you feel about love and hip hop and all that drama? Um, I feel as though love and hip hop is more so like a soap opera for those who need to live other people's lives because there's nothing going on in their own lives. Mm. So therefore they get a chance to live through these characters, vicariously through these characters. Mm -hmm. And so they need to they need to see drama. People who live for drama. We live in a society who likes drama. People like to go to work and see people fight at work rather than get along. Mm. People like to go to people's homes, cause friction, cause conflict, then want to leave and see what happens. So we are Why do you think we like drama? Does it make us feel better? I think that's what it is. I think there's a, a lot of times people just don't like to see people happy mm. because they're lacking that happiness in themselves. See, me, I'm a happy person. Right. So because I'm a happy person, no one can make me unhappy but me. 
that's just how I feel. That's right. So like, if you know, oh, so, you can feel it when you're around you. You're yeah, a happy person. So like, person. so I mean, I mean, it's, it, you can ask any of my ex husbands; they'll tell you like, if I'm not happy, <laughs> it's going <laughs> right. baby. Shantae's about to get happy, <laughs> and, 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 and unfortunately, your unhappiness won't affect that at all. Right. You, you know. know you right. Know, that, that, that's a good answer, but I think myself when we were speaking a couple. But there's a market for it. No, no, it is a market. It's a huge saying, market. For uh, a while back, we were talking about that. It's just like, I think people are just so excited to get on TV, they would do anything to look stupid. To stay on television. Yeah. And I and I said I said that, you know, all the negative stuff, because, you know, me being a hardcore gangster rapper, and we throw the word bitch, and this, that, and the third, and I said, I don't think that anything has done, no matter what a rapper, a male rapper has said, nothing has done anything to damage women like these reality shows and the way they show out on these shows. Would you agree with me since I'm sitting right Absolutely. Now? Absolutely. I think what they have done, it, it has been discussing the the <laughs> the vision and the, the expectation of now female in hip hop is she needs to be this raunchy weave wearing, um, matte lipstick wearing, uh, we'll fighter. fight you on sight. Fight, yeah, we'll fight you on sight. And nine times out of ten, a lot of them are just not built like that. You know, I have seven sisters who fight on site, which means, <laughs> yeah. which means no camera is needed for right. them to set it. You right. know, it don't, they don't even have to be too much friction. I have a sister who doesn't off the thought. Well, she looked like she thought she was going, you know. Right. So oh, it's you, the thought ass. Just a, yeah, I have one of those thought yeah. ass. But don't you sisters, think so, that, you know, don't you think when, you know, I, when you see that, like, you know, I'm like, cause I like told people, I said, you know, when the word ratchet came out, right. I said, you know, my definition of a ratchet is a hood rat in designer shoes with a designer bag. Like, it's like when the girls with a hood rat, we knew they was grimy, but now these girls got fine designer clothes, but the first minute they open their mouth... You already know. It's like, yo, the girls really meet each other. In real life, I mean, you you just met Coco. You met Coco a few times. Y'all are very respectful toward each other. Women tend to try to be nice to each other. Do you women just want to walk up? But and you know what? That's fight? but that's a different level of woman. See that? See. see, we're a different level of woman. So we can meet another strange woman, and we see the good in her. We see something she has nice, and we admire it. Right. We don't envy it because it's something that we too are able to obtain. Right. When you see a man's true wife, and you can truly be a wife, and you have wife tendencies in you, right. you respect his wife. But if you don't have any of that in you, you don't know how to approach her. You don't know how to speak to her. You can't sit at a table. See, I myself uh -huh. can be a person who sits at a table filled with married couples and no one feels uncomfortable. Right. Why? Because I know what it's like to be a wife. So I know how to be respectful. Mm -hmm. Then you have other women who choose to not know how to do that because they would never be that. She's not wife material. Uh -huh. So she can't really be in wife company. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain things. Roxanne, certain we're not oh, getting, we need to keep that in the box. We're not getting into counseling with you. No, no, she needs to be on the show. No, this is what she do. She counsels people. Not right now. We're going to get into that. I love it. You know, no, when someone's dropping that that real, you just can't do nothing but listen. Yeah, but I'm saying we're going to get to her counseling in a minute. She loves to do this. That's why she's Dr. Shantae. Hey, so, so we, so TV, we don't watch reality. No. Because we live in reality. Yes, we do. And we, and, and looking into other people's realities isn't really helpful. It's just a kind of a way of transferring your You know, this it's a distraction from your own reality. And then you wonder why... You know, they wonder why their lives are so stagnant. It's because you've concentrated on someone else's reality and didn't take care of yours. I'm too busy taking care of my own reality, so, you know. Hey, check that out. That that was TV, which turned into a philosophy session. <laughs> yeah, a, a counseling session. <laughs> and that was TV on reality. <laughs> Today's TV segment is brought to you by Hulu Plus. With Hulu Plus, you can stream all of your favorite television shows, whenever and wherever you want. You can watch the current season of Bob's Burgers, Family Guy, and the following. You can also watch every episode of shows like Law & Order SVU, South Park, American Dad, and Workaholics. So use Hulu to make sure you get caught up on all the SVU goodness. Tweet me while you're watching because I always love hearing what you got to say about my show. You might even get a final level tweet. Thanks to all of you who have kept us going for so long, including r slash television subreddit. You guys are why we do it. Hulu Plus works on your computer, smart TV, Roku, Apple TV, Xbox, PlayStation, just pretty much any streaming device you already own. 
right now. Sign up at HuluPlus.com slash I-C-E-T and get two weeks full access completely free. That's HuluPlus.com slash Ice-T. All right. So get with it and start streaming TV now with Hulu Plus. This Fine Level Podcast with Roxanne Shante, you know, in the house, Mick Benzo, and this is sports. Shante, you like sports? Yes, I do. Well, tell I me. mean, because I like athletes. Oh, I mean, I like an sure. athletic body, and so. Oh, you like so, how they move, how I, they baby, jump. Women I'm got it be, good. I'm trying to be truthful. Right. Women got it good, man. I always tell my wife, I'm like, where can a man go? And see a bunch of physically fit women running around in tight outfits all day long. They got football, they got basketball, they got baseball, and all these dudes is jocks, athletic, absolutely rich. Yeah. You know I, why wouldn't a woman like? What you like about the sports uh, this year? Well, okay, let's just say the the Seahawks. Mm-hmm. I feel that um, they're definitely going to go all the way. Uh oh, see, see. Okay. speaking on it, and. Um, well, we had Busy B talking about Green Bay and all that shit. You know? Well, no, I'm not going to agree with that one. Yeah, I'm, see, I'm not going to agree with that one. I'm not going to agree with that You know, that's the opponent. We're not going to agree and, with that And I'm going to say this much about as far as basketball goes. You know, I'm a Nick fan all day. So, I mean, even when they lose, I'm still a Nick fan. I'm one of those people that's, that's just loyal like that. So, Thank I don't you. switch teams. Thank no matter you. what takes place, I'm going to always be a Nick fan. Thank so, you. I can't really comment on anybody else right now. I feel like as if, you know, my brothers are in a fight and they're losing. And if they're in a fight and they're losing, you know, I can't jump in and help them but overall I'm not going to down them because I know that they're going to come back and they are eventually going to win that's just how it is I'm from the projects you don't lose every fight no man you know that's how that's what a real fan is they that's say what that. it is. I, I'm just but I can't fan. be there for the Raiders because they done lost so much <laughs> 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 just <laughs> with yeah. cement dumped the truck on it parked it I have people always like Ice y'all put the Raiders on the map you and Cube and all y'all I said yeah because it was a black hat and they was in L.A. You know, Oakland, that's another Raiders. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, L.A. don't even got a team right now. So, you know, I, I love Kobe. You know, Kobe basically has taken over the number one scorer, right? He he, he scored more points than Michael Jordan now. Yeah, so, yeah. So Kobe, I and mean, Kobe's just a bad motherfucker. I met Kobe when he first got in the NBA. He can rap, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's definitely yeah, not. He's, he's, rap. You, know, you know, he's a fly dude. He's a fly dude. But so. I'm still a Carmelo Anthony, uh, you know. Yeah. That, I that's just, my I man. Just, now, yeah. hold up. We'll pause. So you say no, no, no. Carmelo and Kobe. I am a Carmelo Anthony fan. Kobe is your guy. He's not Michael Jordan because he broke a goddamn record. But he, but Carmelo can fuck with Kobe. Let's get it on. I mean, yeah, yeah if we can make that happen. Let's be honest. I'm being honest. Oh, Brian is a motherfucker. Play. Listen, I'll sell stop. tickets to him. He wins championships stop. now. Yeah, well, Don't get me we started. Need help. We need help yeah. over there. You used to do that when I had to come to L.A. I never forgot to go to L.A. up in the hills and, and uh, you know, the uh, Mike Chicago Bulls is playing. This guy got sneakers. He would buy a joint. He wouldn't wear them. He just throw the sneakers. Look at Jordan. Woo! Sneakers in there. I throw the in sneakers there. through the room. Like, oh, Jordan is Woo! Look at Jordan. Yeah, just sneak up <laughs> Woo! You know, I never forget that, but now you go... You was John with Jordan. No, no, my my basketball <laughs> player of all time is Allen Iverson. Oh shit, AI, yeah. AI, AI, Philadelphia, yes. AI, the, the answer, AI. I liked he, his he swag. Legs, I, 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 damn it, did I say that word? I hate. I, they took that word. I used to say swagger back in the days. These niggas took it, bastardized the word. I won't even use <laughs> oh, it no okay. motherfucking more. So but, we'll eliminate that. Yeah, but but you know. He's flavored, the tats, the braids, yeah, yeah. He the came, little man he came on the in with court. The braids. He came oh, yeah, in with I the braids. They didn't, they didn't like that. Remember, they're like, I yo, was, you got to get the... Like, listen, exactly. Man, he I'll come and play ball. Don't look how I'm looking. I admire him so much. I mean, I met him. AI. I mean, the dude is like one inch taller than me. You know, AI I used to live like, around the corner from me when I lived in Hampton. He made me feel like I should have been in the NBA. You I know lived what I'm at saying? one two like, potion place in Hampton, and Allen Iverson lived around the corner. We used to hang so out. So, what do you man. think was his downfall? And this is just me speaking to you guys. What do you think happened? Too what outspoken. Happened? Wanted to be a rapper, and he was saying things that they didn't appreciate. You know what I mean? Then, so, you think that's then what when he for? started telling the coach, "I don't have to come to practice because I'm that good." Nobody's bigger. Than so, in other words, you would say that it was his surroundings. A lot of a lot of these athletes, a lot of these professionals, what they do is they they fall is the surroundings, the people who they have around them, surrounded by too many yes men, so eventually mm-hmm. get become a no no. Because remember, you're not bigger than the game. You're not bigger than the game. Mm-hmm. You should be at practice. 
rules. You don't I, tell I, me I, I don't need to practice. And I always wonder, like, you know. Maybe it might have been something AI's else. still my man, though. I love him. I'm, I, but I always wondered what it was like to try to coach a pro team. Like, how do you coach 15 multimillionaires? You know, they got their own jets. They got their own, you know, the, the, the power of having those people pay attention. Oh, you must have never seen me work a room, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, oh, you I, me tell you, I'll tell you how you do it. <laughs> I, 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 just, I just know that it's, it's, it's got to be different. It's not like you're coaching like a, a high school team where these kids want to play. You're dealing with all of them are well, superstars. Well, Pat had no problem coaching them. He they, let him know how it goes. They, they he have just to respect smooth. that coach. He's just as smooth. Mm-hmm. And he's got just as much money. Yeah. He doesn't even have to play. And if you don't want you to play, he will sit you on a bench. I think you either want to be a part of this game and a part of my team that I'm putting together, or then sit down. I ain't got no problem with but you sitting Pat down. Pat Riley, do you think every coach has that power? But I think every coach needs to. Mm-hmm. I think in order to have your team respect you, they need to see you as a respectable person. So therefore, you can never be coached by your peers. I don't care how much it's done, mm-hmm. what they say. Your peers can't coach you. That's just like one of your friends wanting to be your manager. You'd be like, okay, listen, you may be able to give me a little bit of insight, but you can't manage me. Mm-hmm. You can't manage this. And I think that's what it is. I think in order to be a coach, you need to be in that position. There needs to be a certain prerequisite set. Like, okay, you can tell so me how Jason you can tell Kidd me how you coaching. can make me a champ, but you need to be a champ first. No, so you said Jason Kidd shouldn't be a coach. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I think he did very well. I'm not saying that. I think he did very well. Now he is their peers because he did what they did. He can show them what he did as but, he played. I understand but what he came. Saying. But he came in from he came in from a respectable position. Because I think what he was, was he was a leader already. So they seen him in a leader's position. He didn't pop bottles with them. He didn't hang in clubs with them. When he came in, they got quiet. He had that E.F. Hutton effect when he went into the room with them, which mm-hmm. made them get quiet and everyone listened. But see, we can't go from, you can't be one of us and now all of a sudden we done voted you the leader. And now, or rather, we didn't vote you the leader. Mm-hmm. The the outside voted you the leader. And now we have to listen to you, not when we've seen you in compromised position. It's just like... I myself as a mom, I, while my children were growing up, even though I've had a few husbands, the fact was I didn't have my few husbands until after my children were already mm-hmm. grown. Mm-hmm. Reason why was because I always felt that there were certain things you couldn't even allow your children to see in order for you to keep a certain authoritative position. You need to be able to say, look, don't play no games with me. I'll wear your head. You need to have certain <laughs> things that they did not see about mm-hmm. you. And I think that's the same way it goes with teams. I just honestly feel that. That's dope. Well, hey, you know what I'm saying? It's like sports are crazy right now. All the teams are juggled. She says the Seahawks. I can't go against the Seahawks. I mean, they're an incredible team. I never I never talk down on Green Bay because I don't care who you are. Nobody wants to play in that weather. I think Green Bay is just a naturally tougher team than Love anybody in the league. Just dealing they with it. They got a tougher skin. I, came, I, I got off the plane up there and they were like, you going to the game? I'm like, are you motherfucking kidding me? I can't even get from the airport. Y'all finna go sit in some bleachers? Like, you're losing your mu-. So their fans are special. But, uh, you know, I, I respect what Shantae was saying. I respect everything she said. But about the coaching, I didn't say it's got to be difficult. And it, like you say, if you don't come in from that heavy respect position... How do you coach yeah. people yeah. that are that exactly. have so much just and hard. they're just so wealthy and rich? And that was sports. This is Fine Level Podcast number 27. And this is the music segment. And since we've got somebody who is a legend in the music industry, it's a chance. A female at that. Yeah. Legend. She told me she didn't want to be a female. But she she said she just wanted to be a rapper. <laughs> but she is a female. Yeah, yeah, we can't leave it out. She is a female. But, you know, one of the rawest people and, and has a very interesting story in hip hop up to today. And I'm just so glad to have her on the show. Roxanne Shante. Thank you, thank you, babe. So now you've been interviewed by a lot of people, but now Ice, you know, you know when, when when these niggas can ask anything, it's gonna ask some real questions. But I'm a I'm a MC like you, okay, so and I'm gonna get some real answers. So and it, and it. it's real simple. It's like you know, you started off the show telling us you were ten years old yes. wanting to rap. You battled at fourteen years old 
when was your first like step truly into the game? Like when did you meet Marley or I was or was it then? No, no, or when was you it, get when, when did it, you get signed? Well, no, 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 not signed, but when? Yeah, did, no, no. When, I wanna, then I'm gonna go. We gonna go in the cold chilling. No, no, we're I'm going that Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of that. I'm, I'm, I'm want to know when. Did she, I know it was gonna be? Yeah. When did she move toward a studio? When it was the time to make okay. records? The very first time I went into a studio, um, I was going down into the ramp. People who live in a housing project can remember when all the laundromats used to be under the buildings in the oh, ramp. Oh, it still is. So they had to go, you had to go down the ramp mm -hmm. and to, in order to go to the laundry. So I'm going down the ramp in order to go to the laundry because my mom was vicious about her laundry. No matter what was going on, she always wanted laundry done. She just was a fanatic for it. So we're going down the, I'm going down the ramp with the shopping cart and I look up on the second floor, Marley's windows right above the ramp. So he happened this to Queens be, Bridge? This is in Queensbridge. Did you so, know him? Yeah, I knew Marley because I grew up with Marley. Okay. So, you know, anytime you heard music on the block, it was because Marley was DJing in his house and he had his speakers in the window. So he would DJ for everybody to hear music outside. So he was already known. That's dope. So mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. had the speakers in his window. So he turned the music down and he put his head out the window. He said, yo, shiny, because very few people call me shiny. He said, yo, shiny. I said, yeah. He said, listen, I heard you could rhyme. And I heard you really good. Listen, come up to my house when you get a chance. I got a beat. I want to hear you get spit something on it. I was like, all right, now listen, I got to do the laundry. So he was like, listen, put the clothes in the laundry and then come upstairs. Wow. So I was like, all right, I'll do that because I figured, you know what? He want me to come up there and do a freestyle. It's only going to take me about five or ten minutes. The clothes is in the laundry. I go up here, do this, and then go back downstairs to the laundry. So I go inside of his house. He puts on Big Beat which happens to be the beat that was under Roxanne, Roxanne. Mm -hmm. So I had just heard Roxanne, Roxanne like the night before. Mm -hmm. So he put on Big Beat, which was like, boom, boom, bap, boom, boom, bap. So he said, yeah, let me just hear you spit anything. I said, okay, cool. Well, my name is Roxanne. And don't you know, I just look Now, your name is really Roxanne. No. Oh. Mm-mm. No. So, no, I'm going to get to that part. Okay. So... So I did it, and it was a it was a freestyle, six minutes, eighteen seconds of straight freestyle, but it made a sensible story. Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Yo, that's really good. That's dope. Yeah, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna use this." I was like, "All right, cool." Ten minutes. That's all it took. I went back downstairs, finished doing the laundry. Later on that night, now you know in the projects you had that one phone that was by the kitchen, way down the hall by the <laughs> kitchen, and it had that long coil. But it wasn't like today where everybody had phones right by their bed. Right. So the phone rings super loud. So I hear the phone ringing and it's like 12 o'clock at night. So my mom was the one who goes off. So I was like, oh my God, please let somebody have died because if that's for me, <laughs> right. you're gonna, I'm going to get it. Gonna be <laughs> yeah, this is going to be something. So I rushed to the phone before my mother could really hear it because I heard it. I run to the phone. I pick it up. Yo, you on the radio? You on the radio? I hung up. What? So now I hear the phone ring. I hang it up and then it rings again. Mm. Now my heart is beating. Because this is during the week, and my mom is gonna kill me. I got school, and like I just, you know, like I'm. How old were you at that fourteen? So I'm like, oh my god, she's gonna kill me. So now the phone rings again. I take it off the hook. You on the radio right now? I swear you on the radio right now. They playing your voice. I hear your voice. I hear your voice. I said, yo, don't call back. I'm gonna get in trouble. Please don't call back. I'm in trouble. So I put the phone on the hook, and I pinched it out. To remind myself, plug it back in in the morning because my mother going to be like, oh, you pinch my motherfucking phone out? You don't pay no bills in here. Right. So I didn't want to go through that. Now, pinching the phone, this is some old school <laughs> shit. That's when you just take the phone out of the receiver just enough so it don't work. It doesn't work. Right. But it looks like it's still plugged in. Exactly. That's how you had to do it. So, <laughs> so the next day, I plugged the phone in when I come outside and I was going to Long Island City High School, which was up on the hill. So everybody was like, was that you last night on the radio? And I was like, no. Mm -hmm. They was like, yes, it was because you was like, and my name is Shantae. Because I knew to put my name in there. I always said mm -hmm. my name. Because mm -hmm. it just it's just because Shantae rhymes with so many things. Right. Day, play, say, bae. Right, so right, Shantae. Right. Right. Rhymes, so, you know. And, um, so Shantae is your real name. Shantae. We're going to get to the bottom of this, right? <laughs> saying Shantae. So, so I said, so Molly, I see Molly. I'm going into my mother's building and I see Molly. You got a record. They want to make a record. I said, who has a record? What are you talking about? They upstairs right now. Give me your mother some money. This all happened in a series of three days. Fly child was giving your mama some money. No, some people from Philly was giving my mother some money. From Philly. From Col um from um Pop Art Records. 
because New York City didn't want to give me. They didn't want to give me that shot. Mm-hmm. So my first record company was out of Philly. Some gangsters named Lawrence and Dana. They was like some real oh, gangsters. Wait, wait, wait. Now, hold on. Hold on. Slow up. Slow up. <laughs> wait a minute. 14 years old. You yeah. make, you washing the clothes. You yes. go upstairs. You spit a freestyle. Marley somehow gets it on the radio. Because he worked for WHBI. He was already on the radio with Mr. Magic. And, and two days, somebody showed up trying to give you a record deal. Gave my mother some money. <laughs> And she made you sign. No, my mom, what actually happened is they gave my mother some money. We, she never signed anything. It just allowed them to be able to go ahead and put it out. But listen to this. Mm-hmm. Talking about making it on your own, okay? <laughs> Talking about everybody, who's going to put me on? Who's going to do this? Who's that? Marley Mar. Yes, yes. Made a tape. Yes. Played it one night on the radio, mm-hmm. and you got a record deal. Yes, I did. Okay, people need to shut the fuck up with all this. I need help, and I need. And this. I'm gonna tell you, this people is... say, and it turned into a phenomenon. It was like once I did that, and once it played on the radio. This is at a time where people had to call in and request your song. Mm-hmm. So to have your song played every hour on the hour was like unheard of. You know, it's not like today where they play the same five artists all day long. Okay, you didn't me, have that then. Then it really you had to truly wait your turn in order to be heard. Magic played. Okay, it was hot. Here's a it question. Was, yes. Here's a good question. Yes. Was it your genius to make the record about the other Roxanne, or was that Marley's idea? The 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 whole thing came up with the fact that Marley put on the big beat, mm-hmm. which was the underlying song for Roxanne, Roxanne. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing else to talk about but being Roxanne. So I came up with the idea of being Roxanne. Molly thought it was great. Now, they hadn't had the other Roxanne. They had not had her. Oh, so, so, okay, so chronologically, UTFO. And then I came. And you just said, they they were singing about Roxanne. and I About a girl named Roxanne. And and I brought her to life. Right, they seen about a girl named Roxanne, and she attacked it. Then they, then come, they attempted then to they, rebrand right, they it to came with the, the girl from Staten Island, the real Roxanne. Right, they tried who to say, never... right, they said, "Well, no, we have our own Roxanne." Because what they noticed was that Roxanne's Revenge, which was my song, had taken over the airwaves and was making so much money that it was actually killing the original Roxanne, Roxanne version. Mm. Because everybody would say, "No, we want to hear the girl." No, we want to hear the girl. No, we want to hear the girl. So they came up with their own girl. So anytime she would perform, the they real. would say, they was like, yeah, we got the real Roxanne. And then when she would perform, the crowd would say, no, we want the black one. <laughs> like, <she's Latino. laughs> yeah, right. They was like, right. where's the black one at? So I remember, you know, even going to different states, every state had their own Roxanne. At 14 years old, right. you're on was, the road. I'm on the road. And this is what was great for me was the fact that being a battle rapper Going to all these different states and everyone having their own Roxanne. I'm Roxanne's mother. I'm Roxanne's father. I'm Roxanne's <laughs> You know, that was up my alley because I'm a battle rapper. So, how, how and many I have unlimited. That record got? 113. It's 113 in the, yeah, it's in the, answers of Roxanne shot there. And UTF. Well, got, stop, stop. Say this again. Mickey. There was 113 answer records of to rock record. to, of my record. But how many and, was UTFO answered on? Um. Well, I guess they would consider that there may have been three. Wow, and you got a hundred and thirteen answers. answers. That might be the. That's got to be the world it is, record. It in, is. In I think answers. they have it listed in the world Guinness Book of World Records as eighty three um, titles. Yes. And the reason why they have only eighty three titles is because some record companies were like pop up record companies overnight, and then you right. couldn't find the person. Or either some people did tapes and sent them into the radio station and different things like that. But um, going somewhere, what it did was it made me. I always had to be on my P's and Q's. I always had to be on my toes about someone wanting to be Roxanne. I never got a chance how to, could to you enjoy s- it. Like, I never got a chance to enjoy being Roxanne how because you, everybody wanted to be it. But how could you cycle what was happening to you at 14 years you old? I at 14 years you old, I don't even know if I understood money. Like, I was like just a kid. You know what I'm saying? I was doing dumb shit, stealing bikes and shit. You know what I'm saying? I was not on tour. Well, you know, I mean, that comes from being a native New Yorker, and that comes from just just straight up being having um having a hustler's mentality at a very young age, I guess. <laughs> so when did you get over to cold chilling? Um, Ty was working with um Ty was Tyrone Williams was actually working with Mr. Magic. So I met him and Magic at the same the same time I met Mr. Magic. I Fly met Tyrone, Ty. which is Fly Ty, and Molly was already working with them. Mm-hmm. So my first label was Pop Art. 
Pop Art didn't want to pay no royalties. They was gangsters. They did what they wanted to do. And so Ty said, okay, well, you know what, y'all? We starting our own label called Cold Chillin'. So I was like, okay, cool. So it was just like a, it was just a natural transition from, okay, you guys don't want to pay royalties. You guys want to put us through changes. We're going over here and we're starting Cold Chillin'. So then that's how I wind up on Cold Chillin'. Did he actually sign you until you go back to school first? Which one did Ty do? Well, actually, the whole situation was being 14 years old, coming from a household where my mom really didn't have too much knowledge about the industry. All she knew was I was able to buy washers and dryers and I was able to, <laughs> to you know, because I was coming from that household filled with love. My mom, wonderful woman. I love her today. You know, we still have a great relationship. Um, but the fact was she didn't know anything about the industry and they took full advantage of that. Nobody knew about the industry. Right. When it, when so they took full advantage of it. And even with me seeing Tyrone as a father figure, as a trusting figure, not having a dad in my life, you know, my mom just felt like, OK, well, you know what? She's not out here in these streets. So she's, you know, she's sending money home. She's able to do certain things. I'm going to trust and trust her with them. I'm going to make sure that this is the case. And so I stayed on tour for three years before I even had a home address. I toured for three years straight, had a baby on tour and everything without even having a home address. You know what? Any 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 girl or anybody who wants to get in this business, you know, people people line up to talk to me just to sit around and say, Ice, you know, I want to know the game. And I'm like, the <laughs> problem is the game I played to get in no longer exists. You know, getting signed right. a record label. So, like, what I did won't work for you. It's just it's a new game now. They want... They want YouTube views and all that. You know what right. I mean? We got signed on talent. You got signed on talent. Absolutely. Now, they don't even have an ear to listen to the music. They just want to know how many people you have following you already. So that they want the kids to actually be their own record label. Before, yes, they do. Before they even put them out. So you got so, so much. I mean, I'm just blown away that it happened mm-hmm. at 14 years old. That's yes. just... that's just Because I got nieces and nephews that are 14 and... They can't even figure out where their sneakers are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you telling them that you're going on tour and you're going out there. Well, God bless Fly High because you definitely had to be in with some people and Marley Marl. Yes, to, absolutely. That looked over you. And, I mean, I remember being in L.A. when the Roxanne Wars started to happen and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, these are some hard girls. I mean, you were definitely hard. Like, it wasn't like, okay... I, like I said, I was like, I don't want to get on her bad side. I don't want to be in a lyric. You know? <laughs> and, you know, like I looked at all the girl rappers that were coming out of my time. And my favorite always was, was you and MC Light. I love Light because Light was raw, too. You know, you know, hot damn, hot damn, ho. Here we go again. You know, and I was like, Light is a rock. You know, I was like, I, I just felt it. And in the, in, a, in a predominantly male thing game, well, you know, I didn't really feel another female MC till Little Kim. Well, those you know, and Foxy like, Brown. I mean, yes. wasn't nothing to fuck with Queen Latifah was me. No, Queen Latifah, I, I was on you know, tour she was with more Queen Latifah. A, you know, dressed you know, to the Queen style. They don't have to be ratchet to do it, but mean on them lyrics. I like picked Queen Latifah out on a tour bus. I heard one of her first records on a tour bus, and I always was like, not only a rapper, but I always felt I was A&R. Yes. I always felt I could, you know, rappers want to pick rappers, like, you know, so, so rappers want to be like that he's dope, mm-hmm. right? And have them win. Mm-hmm. So when we pick somebody out, like I heard Jay-Z, Big Daddy Kane brought Jay-Z over my house, you know, when he was before, when he was That was jazz. like a sign on her label too, Big Daddy Kane. Yeah. Yes. Well, Kane, yeah. Kane, Kane is like, you know. No, I'm just saying. She, was, rap, among, you she was among some real players at home. Cool G rap. Coogee rap and polo. And you know what's so crazy is that one of the prerequisites in order to get signed to Coachella was that you had to be my DJ first. So every last one of them was my DJ first. Who? Kane, Biz, Shan, G, everybody was oh, my DJ Oh, they got first. signed because of you? They, no, they had to be her they DJ. They had to be my DJ first. And then Fly and, Child would and rock the re- with And them. the reason why they had to be my DJ was because being on tour with me was a very, very unique mm-hmm. process. Wow. One, because I never did the same show twice which meant you had to be quick on your feet because I switch songs in the middle of a heartbeat. Like even today I host and I still switch everything around. I practice it one way and then get on stage and be something totally different. And they still had to be able to jump on that and be able to do that. How about MC Shan? MC Shan also. And so it was just the fact of being able 
to know like, okay, this is what entails on tour. This is what it looks like when a crowd is going to go crazy. This is what it looks like to have to win a crowd over because every crowd that I went to, I walked into because I remember one night feeling so bad because I felt like, why don't they like me? Mm -hmm. Why is it that everywhere I go, there's somebody else that wants to be Roxanne? And why are thousands and thousands of kids in here you know, angry, what is going on? So I actually went to my mom and I was like, Ma, you know, this is, it's hurting me because why do they not like me? And here go my mother, Miss Peggy. You see how packed this motherfucker is in here? <laughs> <laughs> they pay not to like you. You see what I'm saying? See, you are the type of person that people love to hate. Now that's what it is. I'm gonna tell you like this. You are like the Alexis Carrington. Now once she made me Alexis Carrington, I don't know if you ever watched Dynasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. But you definitely. know, in Dynasty there was like Crystal and there was Alexis. Yeah. Now everybody liked to watch Dynasty, but you really loved it the night that um Alexis that Alexis was on. Was on. Mm -hmm. So my mother was like, "Look, you the Alexis Carrington of this motherfucker." So that's what it is. People pay. You worry when this is empty. When it's empty, then that's when they really don't like you. But wow. right now, you go on out there, and you know what? From that day on, I walked out on stage with such a presence that I've won over every crowd. And it's been 30 years. And I have never left a crowd not standing on their feet loving me. Like saying, shout That's out. right. So, and you know what? The philosophy your mother told you is the same philosophy. I saw a movie with Floyd Mayweather. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, hey, people pay to see me win. And people pay to see me get my ass kicked. But at the end of the day, people they pay. all pay, they pay to they, see me. They pay up. So, you know, <laughs> it, it, Mike Tyson said it best. People don't pay to see normal. And you have to be a little bit different than the average for people to be willing. You can't just be average. You have to be right. something special Absolutely. going on. But you've had an illustrious career. You know, yes. I mean, you music-wise, then now, right now... Just jumping forward, because, you know, obviously everything's worked out. You've now become a counselor. You're talking to people. Now, what's, what made that happen for you? In life? Okay, well, um, of course, starting very early allowed me to retire very early mm -hmm. or to feel that I needed to retire very early. Mm -hmm. And um, Tyrone Williams was always one to push for education because he was a college graduate. Mm -hmm. And um, I always looked up to him because he was able to articulate. And he told me that you need to be able to deliver your words with more than just being over a beat. So therefore, you need to be a strong orator. Mm -hmm. And you need to be able, because when you're able to speak well, then people will listen. Absolutely. And so in order to do that, you must enhance your vocabulary. You know, you must be able to, to mingle in certain circles. So going to school was essential for me. And I went to school and... Um, I did not receive my doctorate, mm -hmm. but people had already started calling me Dr. Roxanne Shante because of what I was able to do. I can be in a room with a person and when they leave the room, they feel great. So I say, okay. Doctor, listen to this. Doc, my son, <laughs> Little Ice, 13 years old, right? I mean, no, 23 years old, gets in the business to open up. A, dope, a, a drug dispensary, right? They selling weed in California, weed. right? <laughs> legally, Listen to this, no, legally. So he gets this business. He got his guy. They go in. They opening up this thing. He's signing papers downtown. And he tells me yesterday, hey, guess what, Dad? I'm a doctor now. <laughs> <laughs> they made me a doctor because I'm going to give out weed to people for health reasons and stuff. I'm like... You're really, he says, the paper right here says I'm a doctor. So there's Dr. Dre, there's Dr. <laughs> there's Dr. Dre. You're a doctor. If, Can hey, I drink Dr. Pepper? You are. Right. Hey, hey, you know what? I, I don't have a problem with you putting Dr. Roxanne Chante in front of your name because just today, I've been getting some good game. And that's really what a doctor does. He helps you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or a professor is a master of a certain subject. Exactly. You know, so you could be a doctor of hip hop. I mean, I think I've earned my doctorate in this damn Absolutely. thing. You dig know what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, who's really going to come Some along and tell me something you. about that? Right. Some schools give them to you. They award them to you. Yeah, yeah they do. So they, give you, they give Cornell you. Cornell would give it to you. They'll give you an honorary doctorate. And so, because someone had already, they had already started calling me Dr. Roxanne Chante, of course, you're going to have people who look it up and say, okay, listen, she does not have her doctoral degree. She does not have, you know, a, we published, say you did. a, we published, did. a published dissertation. So I say, okay, well, you know what? Here's the situation, people. 
I never said it. Right. They said it. Just, and I just never stopped them. Right. I never said they were wrong. You know, so if that's not hip hop, I don't know what is. <laughs> so, so at the end of the day, there's a certain way that you still must carry yourself. Not just because I carry myself because on, on behalf of Zulu, on behalf of myself, on behalf of my mom, on behalf of my beliefs, on behalf of my children, but just the fact on behalf of hip hop. So I felt that Ooh. I needed to have a different presence. And in order to do that, I needed to walk away from hip hop for a moment and I needed to regroup so that I can come back with something to say and know how to say it. And so that's what I chose to do. When you're part of hip hop, hip hop got me out of the game, got yes. me, it gave me a life, gave me a new identity. And people always ask me, they like, well, you on TV now. Why are you still iced tea? I was like, because that's what got me there. I wouldn't be in the movies. I wouldn't have been in New Jack City or breaking or none of that if it wasn't for hip hop. So the fact that there is still a Queen Latifah or an mm-hmm. LL Cool J, that's really the artist saying, I'm staying true to hip hop because Absolutely. I want somebody to say, I don't like rappers. Well, you watch Nice T every night on Law and Order, which you think he is. <laughs> or them rappers is dumb. Well, you watching LL on TV, you watching Queen Latifah, mm-hmm. which you watching, we got Ice Cube's on TV right now. We're watching a movie he's in, and he's yeah. Ice Cube. Whether he never makes another rap record again, that's Ice our Cube. way. Yep. We always talk about giving, we giving back, because it's easy to cut ties with hip hop. Yes, Ooh. it is. And say, peace. That was when I was young, and I'm somebody now. Now I'm Mr. Lauren Marrow. That's my middle name. I mean, you know, that's my new right. actor's name, Lauren Marrow. Right. You know, now I'm ice motherfucking T. All day long. All day. Please believe Or you today. can call a doctor because she didn't say it. That's the title you gave me. Get, <laughs> guess what? She just never corrected you. Yeah, that's what that's what it is. You it, know, and, and, and it works a lot for me now. And you were working in schools, though, am I right? Yes, yes, absolutely. And I they got, still, what, a three year contract? And I still, or like yes, that? and what I do is I still go around and I still speak. They still hire me to, to be a guest speaker. Um, they still have me come in, come into these different universities. And we talk about everything from from hip hop to real life. And I think a lot of times people are surprised when they come to see me speak and they say, oh, my goodness. Have you written any books? No, I'm trying to wait till I'm 50. I wrote three books already. I wrote I wrote well, no, four. I wrote two novels and two books. The trick to getting a book. This is the trick to writing your own book. Okay. It's basically is you get a person that's a really good writer that you admire their writing and they just really just do in-depth interviews. They just do in-depth interviews with you with you speaking your own words, you know, and just like what you're doing and what they'll do is they'll take that, they'll put that into a book format and then you read it and you correct it. And before you know it, you sitting in front of, the guy Doug Century did my most recent book. He writes about the mob and stuff. He came over here and for about two months, just interviewed me, just interviewed me with tapes Mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much broke the story of my life down, my philosophy and everything down. I, you re-edited it because, you know, sitting in front of a typewriter and writing your life is going to be difficult because you jump from things to things. Right. They take all the stuff you talked about your mother and they put it all in one bundle. They put your early (laughs) stuff, they they bring it all back so it runs in coherently Mm -hmm. and then you look at it and say, no, nah, that's you got that wrong and you right. got that wrong and you read it again, you read it again before you know it, you got a book. Well, that's what I, I, I said I wanted to win time 50. I'm a two-time breast cancer survivor. You got a lot to write. Yeah, I'm a me. two-time breast you cancer survivor great book. and I've been a spokesperson for not only the Breast Cancer Society, but also for the Diabetes Association where I had, um, where they did a multi-million dollar campaign all throughout New York and had me on all of the bus stops and um, the telephone booths, yeah, they still have a few of those telephone booths up. And, you know, they had all these huge posters and everything because what I've done is my philanthropy work mm-hmm. really excels even what I've done in hip hop because I'm a person who gives back. I give back with my hosting. I give back with my performances. Um, when they need me to come and do something, I come and do it. I'm at women's shelters, you know, you name it, I do it. And that's mainly because I felt that even my career was such a gift from God. It was just given to me with no effort. But you need, that, listen I to Ice, that. listen to your nigga Ice. You need to be a published author. 
And once you do that, you know, all your speaking engagements, all the stuff you do will balance off of that book. I speak all over the country, Black History Month. I'm all at the universities. I've done Harvard. I've done all the Ivy League schools, <laughs> Yale, Dartmouth, Stanford, all those things. And a book gives you that extra ability to go in and say, you know, a published author. And when I go in, I just basically do philosophy. I do the same thing you do. I go in, I kind of give them a little run of my life in movies, television, and all these things. Then I open it up to the to the floor. What do y'all want to talk about? We could. I, I, I even say something about cold chilling. I say, we could talk about anything. We could talk about geolitical politics. We could talk about <laughs> that. Or we could, uh, you can ask me Big Daddy Kane's phone number. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I could take you all the way down. Like, I'm going to give you Kane's phone number. Right. But we can go that route. And it's just, it's really great to do. But a book, and you know who she should hook up with? Wahida. Wahida Clark. Wahida Clark. Wahida Clark. We got a, a a female. She's a publisher and a writer, and she work. writes a lots of. She's been on the podcast. She wrote a lot of black novels. She okay. did stuff she like did. that. She's our new. Well, look at this. I came on the podcast and leaving the author. You, you all, it, it's like, I mean, you, you got something to say. I think, you know, they say everybody's got a book in them and some people should keep it in them. <laughs> but some people really have something to say. And, you know, you got all these young sisters out here and you got all these people looking for directions and they need to get directions from somebody who's actually been down the road. Yes. Versus somebody who is on the side of the road telling you about right the road i'm just inspired being so what's happening with you right at this moment you're on the radio i listen to you okay. on the radio well actually right now what i do is i actually do hostings i'm i'm hosting in atlantic city um i'm getting ready to start hosting in las vegas um i host 80s events and what i do that makes my 80s events more unique than any other is that they're totally interactive. I'm one of those people that come out, as Mickey can tell you, I come out, I change clothes during my show. Oh, yeah. Even during you my stage show, I actually change clothes. A I performance bring a... as a whole. She give a performance. Oh, well, thank you. So you, you're in Atlantic City. Yes, sir. Uh, recently or it's coming up? Or... Um, actually, I'm getting ready to, well, I mean, this will probably be after New Year's Eve, but I'll be there New Year's Eve. I'm also there once a month. Um, different what casino, day or different, month? different casinos, different locations. What they can do is they can also follow my uh, Instagram, which is everything about me is under I am Roxanne Shante. The letter I, the letter M, Roxanne Shante. That's my Twitter. That's my Instagram. That's my Facebook. And I can give them all the details on there. Um, all the different places that I'm hosting all over the country because I work. Like a lot of times, people wonder what old school artists do, and I love being old school, so Classic I don't take away artists? from that. Classic artists, you classic mean? artists. Oh, because yes. I don't know who the hell is old school. I know well, classic, classic artists. I mean, classic, you know what it is. Man. You know, yeah, okay. I'm gonna start taking that term, classic artist. What classic? I myself, as a classic hip hop artist, I do perform every weekend. So you will be able to see me at a spot near you. Yeah, we took. <laughs> we like LL's term. You know, me and LL used to battle back in the days and talk crazy. But you know. Look at us. Both of us end up cops on TV. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we can't be mad. But that back in the day, you kind of needed an opponent because that's what helps you kind of get better and stuff. Yes. You know, it was no real hatred and stuff. But LL said he called it the golden era of hip hop. Yes. And I like that term, too. You dig? So having you on the podcast, it's really great. We're going to take some phone calls in a minute. But it's a pleasure. Oh, you know, it's a pleasure. You. So we're going to continue with this podcast, Mickey. Yeah, baby. Shucks. Why not? It ain't nothing but number 27. Now, until Roxanne Shantae writes her own book, you need to head over to Audible. You can get classics such as my new Dungeons and Dragons book, Comrades at Odds, A Tale from the Legend of Driz, and my autobiography, Ice, from South Central to Hollywood, okay? Audible is the world's leading provider for audiobooks with over 150,000 titles to choose from. You can even listen to audiobooks anywhere. They have whisper sync technology that makes sure you never lose your place when you switch devices. And it even lets you switch between listening to an audiobook and reading an ebook on your Kindle. And that's the business. For a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial, go to audible.com slash iced tea. 
That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash I-C-E-T. You'll be saving money and you'll be helping to keep the podcast free. Thanks again to Audible. Hey, yo, this is Ice-T, Mick Benzo, and the one and only Roxanne Shante. Yes, yes. And this is Philosophy. Now, the philosophy segment is brought to you by my final level uh, uh, Twitter page, and I do this thing called The Daily Game. And the other day I wrote, uh, a lie travels around the world three times before the truth gets a chance to put its pants on. Also, people usually are more willing to believe a lie because lies are usually sensationalized, where the truth is kind of blah. Yes. And people like sensationalized things. So, how you feel about that? It's not it's philosophy on our show is more like the Daily Game. We just try to give you something you can live with. How you feel about that? About lies and the truth? I mean, I I believe that. I like that saying. I really like that a lot. Let me hit it. Can I give it to you again? One more time. A lie, more time. A lie travels around the world three times That's before right. the truth even gets a chance to put its pants on. Ooh, I like that. Now, see, that's the naked truth. You see, that's where the naked truth comes in at because you notice I had to put his pants on. <laughs> or his dress naked, on. It was the naked <laughs> truth. So that's what it was. Okay. Um. Honestly, I do believe that. I believe the fact that, but you, the thing about it is, the real will always outlive a lie. See, a lie will always fade. It will lose its momentum. Mm. So it can only go around the world three times, but the truth's going to keep going around the world. Over Once it does get its pants on. Once it gets its pants on. Mm-hmm. But the fact is, yeah, I do believe that. I believe that. It's like bad news travels wickedly fast. It you know does. What I'm saying? And you can't fix it. And even with the press, the press, like, they want to use the negative to get people to listen. Like, I'll give you an example. You know, building the crib, right? So instead of saying Ice and Coco are building the crib, they go, Ice and Coco's neighbors are angry with them about them building their crib. Now, our neighbors love us. Right. But they won't get as many views or uh, watches if you just say Ice and Coco are working on a house. That's not... They need negative press for people to pick up papers. Mm-hmm. Because people, people are drawn to that. Truth. Yeah, they people are drawn to that. that. You were talking about that earlier. People are drawn to that. They don't want the happy. They don't want to see that. And usually, reality show. And usually, usually, lies are negative. Now, a lot of a lot of lies go on now, especially in our field, hip hop. You know, with the rappers fronting and faking and stuff, and they saying, "Oh, I bought this or I own this and stuff." And the kids get into that; they believe that. You know, I was talking to somebody the other night, and they were like, "Oh, well, such and such got this much," and I'm like, "Where? Where did it come from?" <laughs> Like track the movement. I mean, <laughs> you said track the movement. Track the movement. Like where? <laughs> what? What? Is there a hit album I'm missing? Right. Is there something I'm missing? Like somebody could try to count my paper, but then they they got to go. You know, I'm on TV. It's obvious. You make a couple, right? Yeah. So there should be a way to track it. You know. So, but well, they said it. Yeah, please, they said it. I look. It's so funny. My daughter's <laughs> a, my daughter's away at college. Mm-hmm. So my daughter says to me, Ma, do you know what it says about you online? I was like, first thing I get in defense mode, don't believe anything you see online about your mama. <laughs> you already know me as a person. Don't you believe that? She said, no, mommy, it says your net worth is $38 million. <laughs> Oh, shit. I That's said, a net worth I said, well, life. find that shit. <laughs> Let's get it moving. Yeah. If y'all want to laugh, there I is a I wish the network. banks would look at that and use that. Mm. If y'all want a good laugh, go to this website. They got a website and it has people's net worth. And that Ooh. shit is very funny. I watched, I read my net worth and I was like, yeah. What they said well, you was. I don't want to even talk about it, but that ain't in the bank. I know that for a fact. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same way I felt. My daughter's like, Ma, I'm at college. These kids think, I was like, listen, they gonna mess around, get you kidnapped. No, I, I work hard and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I make a nice income, but then at the same time, I spend at an alarming rate. 
You know, an alarm <laughs> yeah, at an alarming rate. I buy shit I don't need. Coco, we just went out and bought shoes she don't need. You know, we do that because you know what they call it retail therapy. Yes, we absolutely. do that. But but I I I work and I hustle and I always have a new idea for it. But all them net worth things, I don't know what they adding up. If they added every dime and dollar I ever made in my entire life. It Ooh. wouldn't add up to the number they got as my net worth. I'm like, y'all niggas is really tripping. <laughs> yeah, I'm eating cereal at night. I don't know what y'all... definitely like cereal. The boy will get himself some milk. Yeah, ain't but nothing wrong with that. I'm having cereal without and milk. And Frosted Flakes. That's baby. a positive lie. And it's a lot of lies out there. And it is. And it's hard. You know what's really sad about it is the fact that a lie, a, a lie can come into play and wipe out all the good you've ever done. Yeah. But that draws attention. They're just looking for attention. And it draw, but it but it does it they want out attention. all the good. The press need attention. But see, sometimes mm-hmm. what happens is with a lie, if you go out and you try to like all right, let's say Joe Blogger says this about you. That doesn't have any weight because that's just Joe Blogger. A blogger is anybody with a with a computer. A blog right. means a web log. So the wild blogger comes out and says this is about Roxanne and Shantae. When you address them, now you've you you, you've them been now, you've, now you've put legs you on them it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they, so a lot of times as a celebrity, you just gotta let the lie go. You it, you're you're simply acknowledging that you even heard it makes it real. So I always go to my Obama you know, I, I got an Obama scenario. You okay. Hear? Yes, please. Okay. Say, say me and Method Man are out and we talking about Obama's haircut. We go, okay. we don't like Obama's haircut and we all on social media talk about Obama's haircut. Then he comes on the state of the nation. He says, this is going on with ISIS over here. This is the problem with police brutality and these are the problems of the world and social this and this, that and the other. And by the way, ICE and them said something about my haircut. You know, Obama right. cannot re- to exactly. my, my bullshit. He's the president. He can't. Uh, he can't even let me know. He even heard it. Exactly. He's on another level. Level. So a lot of times with all this drama and the, the lies, as a celebrity or a known person, you can't address it because mm-hmm. it lets people know that it made it to you. Right. Or, that you even heard it. Mm-hmm. That it even. That it even. <laughs> ruffled your feathers a little bit where you had to address it now see we come up we come from an era where when someone says something about you you are supposed to address them to prove that you are not scared to prove that you have no fear but that gives you know, them credibility exactly because now you're at a whole different level in life so you're not able to do that any longer you're not able to go and approach everyone who says something negative about you. Instead, that's when you got to go back to what my mama said. You get paid for that. So you were supposed to enjoy that. Be worried when they're not doing that. You know, so... Exactly. You know, thank God for Miss Peggy, because... That's your mama. Yeah, that's my mama. So our philosophy (laughs) for today is... A lie is a lie. It, it's going to go on. But sometimes you just got to let it go because when you, the real person, address that lie, you gave it legs. You gave it something to stand on. You gave that unknown blogger that reply from Ice-T. And it's now right. Ice-T is talking to that unknown blogger and they get to wake up out their mama's basement and go, oh, shit, they heard me. I'm right. now, I am now somebody. You're and irrelevant. A, li- a lie will travel around the world three times before the truth gets a chance to even get its pants on. But when the pants get on and it do catch up to that lie, baby. That's yeah. that, that, And that was philosophy. Okay, this is another segment of the Final Level Podcast number 27 with Roxanne Shante. And this is called I'm Not a Hater. Well, but I, I hate, hate shit. shit. Hate Shantae that. got something she hate. hates. I think Shantae hates something. Something that's, <laughs> Roxanne, it's gotta be something Roxanne, that bothers you. What really you hate? You're not a hater. But what but what you really bother, hate what, that. What, what's a pet peeve you have? Okay. I'm not a hater. Mm-hmm. But I hate when people tend to go off of what they hear other people say about a person before they get to know them. Gotcha. Like, I really hate that. Mm. I think that what you need to do is meet a person for yourself and then decide on and then decide on how they treat you. So I really do hate because I, I was raised not to hate anything, to dislike things mm. and to change it's them. It's basically pre- but to never prejudice hate them. what you're talking exactly. about. Exactly. But you know, for someone to say, oh no, I don't like her either. Like I hate when people do that, when they prejudge a person before they know them. And I think that's one of the only things I really hate. I learned that the hard way. When I we think that came my from, story. 
I think that comes from our projects. You know, we all grew up in projects. I hate her, so you was, I hate her too. You right. don't even know her. Exactly. Why are you and hate then, her? And then you know it's always that one person who always says, you don't even know how to say you don't like her, right? Mm-hmm. I got a bad story about this. Okay. This is a bad story, and it happened to me. And I learned a fucked up lesson. <laughs> I'm not even going to say the name, but there was a rapper. Mm-hmm. All right? This is back in the day, not a new rapper. This was back when I was rapping, and it was a rapper that I thought was garbage, and he wasn't good, and da 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 da. Right? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, yeah. When I met him, he said, "Ice T, you're my idol." Ooh, <laughs> ooh. And you were hating. I'm telling this thing's whack. So basically, he's saying I'm trying to sound like you, like you're the nigga I look up to, and I'm saying <laughs> you're whack. Wow. So therefore. I made him whack, right? <laughs> I, I, I was like, I was like, and he was the nicest person. Wow! Don't you he, now? Now tell the truth. I, I now learned. don't you don't you really hate when it's a really nice person and they really horribly whack, like they really can't sing or they really can't rap, and they come to you and they ask you for your opinion? Don't you just hate when you have to? I don't lie to them. You don't? No, I can't. I got a story about a that. A lie goes yeah. around the world three times before, before. the truth puts his pants, pants on. on. I got that a story. That man lived them three times before you put them pants on. I got a story about that. <laughs> we was in New York City, Mick. Me, Shawnee, Shawnee, Shawnee Mac, my dogs. So this dude walked up to his son in, in Times Square. He go, yo, Ice T, I'm a rapper, man. Let me spit. Now, I hate people. I'm not a hater, but I hate <laughs> but you people want to rhyme to you in the street. But here he go. So he start rhyming. So we t- we rhyme. He rhyming. Yo, my skills are flows. Whoop de whoop de bap whoop de boop boom. And we weren't obviously paying attention. And the niggas rhyming like this. Whoop de whoop. And I spit the death, the death, the death. Like you give a fuck. About anything I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that, that was funny. That, that nigga Brian just said, like, you give a fuck about anything I'm saying. And we all, he got our attention. And we like, nah, man, it's cold out here right now. I just felt so fucked up. And homie walked off. I know he just made a diss album about me. That <laughs> I know you don't give a fuck about what no, I'm saying. No, but it saying. came right out of the right, flow. Out of the flow. I'm loving this and that, and I'm this and that. Like, you give a fuck about anything <laughs> you're saying. That's it. Now, did you, feel, now did you feel bad about that? I no? felt bad, but I hate people walking up to me and rapping in my ear. Oh, don't do the beatbox in my ear. Like, oh, come yeah. on, man. I, when people, like, when they get ready to do it, though, I say, you know, don't rhyme to me. Give me a CD because if you impress me, I got to impress somebody else. Well, I'm going to tell you what I do. I'm very encouraging. When someone comes to me and they tell me that they have a demo or they have anything, the first thing I tell them straight off the bat is, listen, I don't know how to help you get a record deal. Let me just tell you my story first. And then if you still want to give me your stuff, then that's fine. But let me just let you know. I was doing my mother's laundry. I got discovered like one in a million chances it'll never, ever happen again. I'm like that commercial yeah. on TV where they say, one out of every one billion something that's how mine happened so I couldn't begin to tell you where you should take your tape to or how you should do it but what I can tell you is whether or not your packaging is good so if you give me this CD and you're telling me that you're a great rapper and you're this and you're that and then I look on the cover and it's just a whole bunch of naked girls and some bottles of champagne <laughs> I'm going to this ain't going to work I can tell you that part mm-hmm. now that part I can tell you you know, and then they'll say, well, you know what you think I should package it differently? At least I know what it should look like for someone to at least want to open it gotcha. or listen to it. Wow. It's all like shit I'm telling them, though, bottom line. I'm not with the make you feel good. <laughs> Sometimes what do you, you tell them? How do you tell them niggas whack? Saying? What are you saying when somebody hands you some whack? Tell me, I can't listen to this shit, bro. <laughs> yeah, somebody else, man. Serious. I can't listen to that. Maybe somebody else will like it, but that's not something I like. We know how cold we used to oh, be back so in the day. Me. I'm going to tell you, we used to be cold. Done. No, we used to be cold, you, but somebody no, else may like it. You. I don't. Let me tell you what they used to do with cold chilling. I know what they did. Cold chilling used to take people's tapes. Tell them, listen, when you send us your demo, make sure you put it on high quality tapes. Metal tapes. This is right. exactly. And then you know what they would do? When they take, when they take them and they do that, we put them in the box. And then when anybody needed a tape, 
they go into the demo box and take out the high quality tape and then yeah. put in the thing and put the little tape over Play the top record. and record on top of that. That was good. That was way of not I used to tell the Maxwell, niggas. the Maxwell, the Maxwell tape. Yeah, some people, yeah. some people should. Sony's were good too. I, yeah. Look, that's they, me. Yeah. That's me. And I'm not. I listen, I listen to the demos. I never claimed to be the greatest rapper. I put myself at a one and rock him at a ten. I know that these niggas can wrap their circles around me, but. I know whack when I hear it. Like whack oh. is whack. Okay, now I'm saying if I'm if I'm only one above whack, you are whacker than me. So you definitely ain't gonna make it. But I mean, I used to tell niggas like, listen, that tape you gave me. Okay, the music needs some work. Okay, and the rap. You could tighten that up. Now there was a little bit of air before the music came on. Remember that? T- that yeah, little bit. Mm-hmm. Th- that was dope. You <laughs> said <laughs> the hiss. Was dope. Before the damn track started, that dead air had me in suspense like a mother. <laughs> that's what got me was the dead air. No, that's that's being oh, mean shoot. and rude. But, but you know what else too? I don't hate. I'm not a hater. But, but I do hate <laughs> when they rhyme on top of a hot beat. That was a hit of someone else's. Because if I'm sitting here bobbing my head, I'm only bobbing my head for what the track was and what they used to say. So that means I'm sitting here thinking Biggie, not thinking, you know what I mean? I know that just makes it difficult for me. Wow, we went in a lot of hate directions, right? A lot of shit. And we wasn't even supposed to hate like that. We don't hate, but it's. it's, 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 You're not a hater. But but we just hate hate that that shit. (laughs) There you go. Hey, yo, this is Ice-T, Final Level Podcast, and this is Games. Now, everybody out there knows I'm a video gamer. I get off and on the games, depending on how much I got to work. I do have a job, so therefore, I can't sit in front of the uh, video game all the time. But uh, because it's been, I've had a Christmas vacation, I've been playing my games and stuff. And I got to admit, I kind of got burnt out on Call of Duty. I've been playing Call of Duty Call of Duty, Modern War, uh, Advanced Warfare, all that. And I got back into Borderlands. Borderlands is a game uh, that a lot of y'all are familiar with. They came out with a game called the Borderlands Pre-Sequel, which is a game that's supposed to be before Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2 came out. Borderlands is just a game for people to like to get guns. You run around this game, Mickey, all you do is you accumulate these weapons and every level you get to you get better and better guns Mm -hmm. they got guns to shoot fire they got guns to shoot like green sludge and they got guns to shoot electricity and all these damn guns and I don't know it's just like I'm a gun fucking pervert so you become a gun runner in that game you just go after more and more guns and like when you shoot a motherfucker you see like numbers jump off of him like he's dying and he turns into sludge and shit. But people just want to know what game I'm playing. And right now I've been playing the Borderlands pre-sequel. Uh, it's, it got DL- Xbox or PS? I'm still stuck on the Xbox because, oh. like I told you, people give me the free Xboxes and stuff. Um, I, 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 uh, I'm I just kind of like, now that I've been playing Borderlands, I played it all the way through once. Now you get to play a Vault Hunter. You call it, it's called an Advanced Vault Hunter. All the gamers are going to know. This sounds like geek shit, but all the gamers right. know what I'm talking about. When you get to the second time, you start to think like, I'm about to play this game all over again. All I'm going to do is get more guns. What the fuck am I doing? Like, why am I... It's just a game to go pick up guns. You just pick up guns and ammo. All you do, and you get... Like, when you're on level 31, you have to have a level 31 gun, and then you get the guns, and you trade the guns, and then you take the guns to this thing called a grinder. The grinder turns these guns into better guns. It's like some gun (laughs) shit. (laughs) So yesterday, I was playing the game, and I just threw the controller down. Like, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm 
killing these dinosaurs and shit. Hey, so I'm, I'm that's like, what gamers do, baby. They yeah. love to play their game. Man. But this so how many levels you can get up to on you this? You get up to level fifty, and you had thirty one already. Yeah, and I don't know if I want to finish now. I'm just like in a warp <laughs> right now, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm looking for another game. Uh, I played, you know, The Evil Within. It, it ran out too soon, and I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm just like now in, in gamer warp where I'm looking. I bought this other Borderlands game, and it's not even really a game. It's a game where you. I, I got gypped. I play it, and it's it's some fucking. <laughs> oh, you got gypped. It's a story that you just hit A, B, or C, and it changes the way the story goes. It's like watching a cartoon. <laughs> There's no you don't get to shoot nothing to kill nothing. So, I that's see, not a game you like that you can't yeah, shoot and kill. Right them. now, I'm in limbo. I'm in like this zone of games where I'm missing a new game that really has me. Is excited. there any games out? People are telling me to get some game like Halo's coming out, but I never played Halo, so you kind of, kind of like down yeah, and out. Yeah, I'm down and out with my games you're just right collecting now. Collecting the guns though, you had thirty one, I, I just got the thirty one, and I said I'm tired. I'm just, not, <laughs> I'm just, I don't get where I'm going. I know where I'm going because you're playing the same game over again, and I'm just like, I'm just needing a new game, man. So maybe somebody on Twitter can tell me what game I should play that I'll be excited about. All right? And that was games. Hey, this is Ice-T, Roxanne, Shantae, and Mick Benzo. Who is this? Um, Eva. Hey, Eva. What's happening? You calling the podcast. What you want to talk about? Hey, um, I didn't know I'd actually be on the air, but um, I just wanted to have the opportunity to tell you that um, I'm a fan of you and uh, your many works. Thank you. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so awkward. I'm hiding from my mom. How old are you? Um, I'm 15. And I'm supposed to be doing the dishes, but I figured this was much more important. Oh, okay. Well, good. <laughs> hiding from my mom. You, where are you living? I you, am. Where, I am. Where do you live? Um, I live in a little town called Stronghurst in Illinois. Okay, okay, and you just decided to call the podcast. You're probably watching Twitter or Facebook, and you said, I'm going to call Ice-T. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's just wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Well, don't get in trouble. Why don't you go finish those dishes, okay? I will. I will. Thank you so much. All right, you take care. Boy. All right, you too. Is anybody on the line? Who's there? This is Ice-T, Roxanne, Shantae. Who's this? Peace. This is Shamel Dana Folks from South Jamaica, Queens. What's up, everybody? What's happening? Hey, what's going on? Say something to Roxanne. It's all good. Yeah, hey, Roxanne. You know who loves you, baby. You know. <laughs> you already know. Well, thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw, that's how I got through, because of Roxanne on Facebook. But listen, Ice, man, I mean, you know, from the gangster rap to the movies and the whole nine yards, man, I'm on yards, man. Keep doing what you do. And that fly wife of yours, oh my goodness. Man, y'all got it together, man. I'm, I'm a big fan of both of y'all, man. I see you doing the rock thing too nowadays. I don't know what's up with that, but more power to you, baby. And Roxanne. Yes, sweetie. The R-O-X-A-N-N-E. <laughs> and you said somebody else, uh, is it Benzo? Yes. Peace to y'all. Happy New Year, and God bless you real good. You heard me? All right, thank hey, that's you. That's fly, man. That's real fly. <laughs> thank you for calling in. Hey, who's on the line? This is Roxanne Shantae and Ice T with McBenzo. What's up, what's up? Who's this? This is Mama Mia. How you doing? Hey, Mama Mia, where you calling from? I'm calling from Gary, Indiana. Okay, okay. Shoot, that's my man Michael Jackson, that baby. What's happening? What's going <laughs> that's on? That's right. You heard that. You know that. I just, uh, thank, first of all, thanks for the opportunity. And um, I just wanted to let you know that I am a major, major fan of both you and Roxanne Shante. Oh, thank you. Sweetie. I am a female MC as well. Okay. And, uh, Man, girl, back in the day, I mean, I still bump that shit. I'm sorry, excuse the language. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. But, uh, man, you have no idea how how you both have influenced me as a, a hip-hop artist. Not only that, but I'm like a major forensics uh, 
Love and, and Law and Order. Come on now. I think I've seen every episode that, that y'all have made. And uh, we have something in common, I see. My name is Tracy, too. <laughs> how, do spell, how do you spell your name? T R A C Y. You spelled the right way. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yep. The only way. Well, it's easier. But, uh, it's easier being a girl named Tracy. I had to fight a lot over that name. You know, it's like the uh, boy named Sue. I bet you did. I bet you did. Yeah. I bet you did. I know. I get. I, I get it too. Because my last name is Garcia, and they like like Tracy Garcia. <laughs> right. You just so, punch him in the face. Yeah. Yeah, but, but uh, I, man, I'm like so pumped right now. I cannot believe I'm on the phone with two of the biggest icons in the hip hop game. I'm like, my heart is like pounding right now. Oh, thank you, <laughs> so Thank you. But you know, it's an honor to have Roxanne and you on the phone because you know this is why we do this. You know, just for the love and and, and the fact that you you feeling absolutely what we try to do. You feel me? Absolutely. And you know what? Y'all were game changers. I mean, you know, if if we could turn back the hands of time and bring and bring the love for the music back the way it used to be, man, you had no idea. These kids nowadays have no clue wh- where it derived from. You Absolutely. know, you're well, so you, right. You know what it was though. Uh, you probably were witness to the birth of a culture. You know, and. When things are born, it's always raw. You know, we didn't know what it was, and it was a youth culture. It was made by kids that came up. And right. There is no new culture that has come after hip hop. Like that was the most recent one. There was the hippies. They came. You know, uh-huh. there was you know a movement, a, a, a early jazz movement, rock and roll, and then hip hop, and that was a birth. No one knew what the break dances were. We didn't know <laughs> no. that they were making something that would last forever. So being part of it was a birth of a culture that kids still live it today. Sure was. They're living a version of it. But they ain't breaking on the corners and having the Adidas on and the, it was it was a lot to being hip hop. And it was a beautiful thing. <laughs> a beautiful thing. Yeah, and uh that's you know, I I just recently dropped a single. I'm not I'm not looking for any promo. I just wanna tell y'all that uh, I just dropped the track, and the title of it is Daddy Say. And basically, it's um, based on my history in hip-hop and how I dealt with so much bigotry and negativity being um, I was raised by the old-school Sicilian father. So hip-hop was unheard of. You know, I used to hide my notebooks under the bed, had to, you know, hide under the cover with my headphones on, listening to (laughs) y'all. So I struggled with it, too. My daddy was like, no, girl, we're not going to do this. We don't, uh uh-uh. So I totally understand. That's that's just coming from a different perspective. It was a big no-no in my household. God bless you, you know. yeah, y'all like I and y'all as well, and and have a, a safe and happy New Year. And once again, thanks for being such a, an inspiration. You know, it means a lot. It really does. Well, thank you for calling in. We really appreciate it. Happy holidays to you too, sweetie. See, that's that love, love, Gary, love, love. Indiana. That's yeah, that absolutely. love. I'm going back to Gary, Indiana. Here I come. Baby. That's crazy. Hey, this is my Mick. Excuse me. This is Ice T, Mick Benzo, the Human Dictionary, the Mictionary, Mictionary. and the one and only Roxanne Shante, who's on the line. Yeah, how you doing? My name is Antarctic from the North Pole. I'm cold, Jack. Oh, I want a person to that, you know, that, That's God. Rockwell. That's this Rockwell. Rockwell. Yeah. That nigga that's Rockwell. 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 That's Rockwell. Rockwell. We got you, Rock. Do... We got you. Can't Rockwell. Sneak in on yeah. us. You can't do an Ice T impersonation to Ice T. Nah, this, see, this is my real voice. This is what people get twisted. <laughs> down a lot we like got Rockwell in the building, baby. I wanted to know what he thinks about my voice. But first and foremost, before all this starts, I want to wish y'all a happy holiday. Happy holiday. Happy New Year. God bless. This and y'all been doing a great thing. And this podcast is awesome. I love it. I listen to it. And it's just something that, you know, has inspired me to, to, to stay focused on what I do as well. Because you always give a positive note. Hey, look, for the listeners that's listening in, man, this is the gentleman that uh, emulates my guy, Ice-T. This is he does a lot of people, though. Yeah, right? he does He does DMX. You got DMX in there? Is DMX around? DMX is in the building. I'm in the building. Always. You already know. <laughs> 
Hey, plot the clip. Talk, talk, talk. Stop. Is, uh, what's I love <laughs> what you do. I love it. I love it. I am inspired by everything you do. And it's coming from the big dog, BMX. That's BMX. <laughs> BMX, baby. You know, I got my bike on deck. We also got Chub Rock on the scene, and I want to thank all you hip hoppers out there. That's Chub Rock? Chub Rock, 1990. Chub Rock jumps up on the scene with the rain and a fucking full of rain. But first and foremost, I'm, I'm going to break this down real quick because a lot of people that don't know, like the dude that called before, Ice has been an inspiration to me. A very big inspiration throughout my whole hip hop career since a child. Okay, Nick Benzo as well, because Nick Benzo has got a positive attitude and Roxanne and Shante <laughs> slapping down ETFO. Yo, where's, where's Pac the Peanut? Where's, where's Pac the Peanut at? Where's Pac the Peanut? Where you at? I, there's a lot of people up in the building, but check this out. I used to listen to Rap Flow, talking about that way. The rock the mic in the disco. I used to like how that shit was going down with my own sound, so I try to write rhymes. Something like them. My boy said, That ain't you, Ice. This nigga is Classic. crazy. I'm just shutting up. I'm just shutting up. Listen to you. I'm just sitting back in shock like, oh, like this nigga is crazy. You know what? Hey, Rockwell, we about to go to the next that caller. Shit sound like them. We about to. Right. You, you know, you stay doing what you y'all do. Keep doing the positive things. God bless you. This is Rockwell right here. And I want to let you know. Y'all been great, man. I love the podcast. Happy New Year. Make all these wishes of the new year come true. And that's all I can say. God bless. God bless, Thank baby. You, Thank you. Thanks, homie. That was good. That, that was, was good. That was good. Yeah. I catch him. I know his voice, we but I hear We got DMX. Chuck Brock jumped on the scene. <laughs> that's what's up. Hey, there's a lot of people calling in tonight for Roxanne Shantae. That's because you're a superstar. That's what happens. That's what happens. Who's on the line right now? This is Anthea. Uh, I'm currently in, where am I? I'm in Boston, <laughs> um, but I'm Australian. Okay, okay. So what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Uh, well, I just wanted to say, hey, I was in LA for your last concert um, with BC, and I was hanging with Coco, and you, like we were having such a great time. Uh, it was my first concert of yours, because I'm, I'm only 19, so, you know, back in the day, minute, I wasn't wait, really wait, wait, around. Hold but, on. I think I know who this is. Are you the girl that's a friend with Coco's that came and saw us in L.A.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to hear, I don't know if y'all talked about it on the podcast tonight, but, like, news Australia-wise has been going crazy with Sydney and all the terrorism and stuff. I just wondered what your, like, take on that was. Because for us, like, even though I'm in America, like, it was still such a shock. Like, you know, we never had anything like that go on or anything. So I was just wondering what you guys are thinking. You know what? On that whole... You know what? I'm not fully informed on the situation that happened out there because uh, I try to tend to stay away from news. <laughs> the news is just depressing to me as a whole. So I kind of take it in bits and pieces and try to deal with stuff that I can control. But I heard there was a situation over there. I mean, you want to give me a little outline of what really went down? Uh, yeah, sure. I stayed up all night watching it. Um, so what went on was... Uh just about 10 days before Christmas, a guy um, who was Islamic, uh, he came into a, into a Sydney store in the CBD, like in the main street of Sydney, and he, it was a lint cafe, like a chocolate cafe, and he um, held up the whole store. And there were uh, a number of hostages, I think there were about 15 in total, and during the day, a few escaped, and it went up, ended up going on for about 17 hours. And in the end, it didn't resolve peacefully. Um, and t- two people died, two of the hostages died, and also the, um, the Islamic man died as well in gunfire and going in. How did he die? The cops came and ran in and killed him? Well, what happened was throughout the day, like a few people, two people escaped and then another three people escaped and this was like six and seven hours in and then just before it happened, like another seven people like just escaped and like they had to go in quick for the last few hostages and like they had to make a split call and then 
yeah, three people ended up dying, including the um, husband. Yeah. yeah, you know what it is? It's like, I guess people in the United States are just numb to like access situations like that where people are taken hostage and all that stuff. And that probably doesn't happen that much in Australia. So you guys kind of no. kind of got blown away by it. Uh, I just don't think any place is uh, protected from crazy people, so to speak. People that just decide to, to do crazy things, you know. And, you know, whether they're connected to whatever type of radical or terrorist group, that's all up for uh, discussion, too. Because a lot of times news will put a spin on it. You notice how you said an Islamic man, you know. So... Yeah. It's just terrible. Yeah, for sure. It's just terrible. It's bad, you know, and hopefully, you know, you guys will recover from it. God bless the people that passed away. But, you know, anytime, at any moment, we could all be put in danger. I mean, my next door neighbor could decide he wants to come over here and barricade himself in here, you know, and, you know, going to kill us yeah. all unless he gets some, some, uh, Domino's Pizza. You know, I don't, you know, never know. I like Chris Rock say, whatever happened to good old crazy? You know, there's crazy people all over the world, but thank God your people are safe and your friends and family are safe and it's terrible. But, uh, you know, yeah. it's not much I can really comment on. But thanks for calling into the yeah, podcast, yeah. okay? And thanks for being a fan of Coco. Thank you very much for being such a solid supporter. Peace. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Hey, Roxanne. Yes, yes, the, babe. The fans called in. You know how it is. It, it's good I, having a female here for 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 the female opinion, especially somebody like you who I really respect. It's been Thank wonderful. You. It's Thank been you. real wonderful. So what's going on? Anything you want to promote on the way out of the show? So make all the listeners, you know, we got a lot of people listening to this every week. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I would just say that what they can do is follow me on my Instagram, my Twitter, and my Facebook, and they're all under the letter I, the letter M, Roxanne Shante. So that's I M R O X A N N E S H A N T E, all one word. And I can keep you up to date on everything because I'm one of those people who truly post. I put up Instagram pictures. I'm a Facebook person. So just follow me, and I'll just keep you up to date on everything. Yo. I mean, we got to say no more. I'm saying this is <laughs> rap royalty. There's only a few people to get that term, you know, rap royalty. You know, the, 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 the were you, one last thing, were you the only female member of the Juice Crew? Actually, um, originally, yes. Um, up until the very latter part of the Juice Crew, we did have a sister named Glamorous. Okay. Okay, but you the OG member of the, of the yeah, Juice Crew. The oh, yeah. The yeah, you the mother yes. of the family. Yes. Everybody had but to be your DJ. But as the mother of the family, you know you got to include every family member. That's just the way you keep That's it. how fly she is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. Mick, this has been a good podcast. Oh, number 27 with why they had to go and make a record about me. The R-O-X-A-N-N-E. -N -N -E. Roxanne Shantae. Yeah. <laughs> Do us a favor. <laughs> tell a friend to tell a friend. Please yeah. believe it. Peace. Peace. We out of here. That's how that's how that's how that's how that's how I'm living. That's 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 how that's how I'm living. That's how that's how that's how that's how that's how I'm living. That's that's how I'm living. That's that's how I'm living. That's how that's how that's how that's how that's how I'm living. That's 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 how that's how I'm living. That's how that's how that's how that's how I'm living. That's that's how I'm living. That's that's how I'm living.